Hello and welcome to Peter's Railway HQ for National Storytelling Week. I'm Chris Vine, author of Peter's Railway. There are now 20 books in the series and they're packed full of stories, science and real engineering. The books are all about Peter and Grandpa's adventures while building a railway across a farm and as you can see the railway really exists. The North Yorkshire Moors Railway have asked me to read an excerpt from one of my favourite books and so today I'm going to be reading from The Picnic. I hope you enjoy it. The Picnic. Grandpa was driving the small steam train down the line to Woodland Cottage. Grandma was riding in her special saloon carriage. She was going out to the cinema later with Peter's mum and dad. Peter and the twins, Kitty and Harry, were staying at home with Grandpa. Grandma and Mum gave him lots of instructions. There's a beef stew. Don't forget to heat it up. Make sure they're all in bed by seven o'clock. Get them to brush their teeth. They were still giving poor Grandpa his orders as they drove off down the road. Grandpa, however, had his own ideas on how to entertain children. When they had gone, he went into the kitchen to start cooking dinner. Through the window, he could see the children playing on the railway. Peter was filling the tender of fiery fox with water, while Harry was pushing Kitty along the line in a coal wagon. Grandpa didn't know much about cooking, but heating up the beef stew was easy enough. He could put jacket potatoes in the oven at the same time, but what else would go with it? I know, he thought to himself, I'll boil up some cabbage and Brussels sprouts. That will make a really healthy meal. It never occurred to him that the children might not like cabbage and sprouts. Dinner time, he called out of the window, and I've got an easy question for you. Would you like to eat in the boring old kitchen, he asked them, or would it be more fun to go for a picnic on the train? Picnic, 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 everyone shouted. So they carried all the food and drink outside and loaded it onto the wagons. Can we have the picnic by the river at the waterfall, asked Peter. Of course we can, replied Grandpa, laughing. Jump on quickly and let's go while the food's still hot. I'll drive the train, he continued, then you can all enjoy the ride and think about how hungry you are. When they were all aboard, Grandpa climbed onto the locomotive and checked the boiler. The water level was fine and the fire was burning bright and hot. He gave a toot on the whistle and cracked open the steam regulator. With a few wheezes and chuffs, Fiery Fox eased slowly out of the little station, clouds of white steam pouring out of her chimney. It was a pretty run on the railway, with the first part of the line running through the orchard behind the house. After that, the railway went through a field and ran along beside the River Woe. Faster, Grandpa, faster, shouted the twins. Grandpa opened the regulator and Fiery Fox raced across the field. The children laughed as their hair blew back in the wind. Now they could see the waterfall in the distance and Grandpa started to slow down. He stopped right beside the watermill which they had built last summer. It was turning quietly, generating electricity to power the house and farm. With the water rushing over the rocks and dry grass to sit on, it was the perfect place for a picnic. The sun was low in the sky and they tucked into the food like hungry lions. They all started with a plate stacked high with beef stew, baked potatoes, cabbage and Brussels sprouts. It was so much fun eating outside that Peter and the twins completely forgot they didn't like cabbage and sprouts. They just ate everything. More cabbage please, Grandpa, shouted Harry. More sprouts please, Grandpa, shouted Kitty. More of everything, sang out Peter. Grandpa piled their plates up again and the party fell silent while they demolished every last scrap of food. When they were finished, Grandpa told them about steam engine drivers in the old days. If the train was stopped for a long time at a red signal, he began, the driver and farmer could cook up a really good breakfast in the cab. They would heat the coal shovel by holding it in the flames in the firebox, he explained. Then they would take it out, wipe it clean and add some cooking fat and sausages or bacon and eggs. Then they would hold the shovel back in the firebox until breakfast was cooked to perfection. Grandpa chuckled, I've got some mini sausages here, let's cook them in Fiery Fox. They were the best sausages they had ever tasted, apart from the one which fell into the fire. Now I've actually got some sausages here today, so I think we might finish this part of the story by cooking sausages in Fiery Fox or Bongo's firebox. So we've got some little sausages here and we'll put them on the coal shovel and put them in the firebox to cook. Here we go.
Can you see the lovely flames in there to cook it? Right. I wonder how long that will take. Right, I reckon that's cooked to perfection, Peter. Here we go. Ooh, that looks perfect. Yum, yum. Mmm, bliss. Right, here's another sausage coming out. Do you think that's cooked, Peter? Yep, hopefully it is. Oh, they look absolutely wonderful. Mmm. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little taster into the wonderful world of Peter's Railway. You can buy signed copies of the books at petersrailway.com. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.